Hey guys, what's up? Uh, Chip here. And what I thought I'd do today is talk a little bit about the new 2.91 version of Blender, which Howard has added these really great booleans. And one of the Nitrox customers has actually uploaded this image and asking how he would create this in Nitrox. While the image is fairly simple, it is a very difficult one to create fully with modifiers. What I thought I'd do is combine building this model with showing you how great the new 2.91 booleans are. And one of the things that you're going to notice right off the bat is that to create a Boolean model like this, there's a ton of coplanar faces that you're going to need to worry about. And that's where this new Boolean function that Howard has created for 2.91 comes in. So let's get started. Okay, here we are in our 2.91 alpha scene. Let's hide this. Shift A, we'll do a, a mesh and a plane. I'm going to tab into that and I'll have, grab this. I'm going to just move this out, minus one, something like this, tab. Now, I'm also going to go ahead in vertex mode, and I'm going to add some bevel weights here. And I'm going to make them one, tab out, and I'll add a modifier, a bevel. And if you notice, we'll click vertices, and we'll say the limit method is going to be weight. So we only get those ones up there, and then we will uh, add the amount. Now, notice that... The mouse not working. The reason why that is is because I tab back into this. Notice I put bevel weight on the edge data, not on the vertices data. So that's a common mistake, and just want to show that. So this is obviously going to go. You know, it's going to use the clamp over right here, that's uh, set here. So that means that before we had to be really careful that we got to, we didn't have coincident vertices there. But now with this new boolean, we don't really have to worry about that. And let's finish this. And then we can talk about that a little bit later. So look, 10. There we have our basic bevel. So now that we've done that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to add a solidify. I'll set this to zero with the offset. And the thickness is going to be one. So it's like there. Now, that looks about right. I'm not sure exactly the dimensions, but we are trying to make this a little bit to scale. So now that we're done with that, let's uh, shift A, mesh, plane. So there's another plane. And here we're going to just jump right in and start adding modifiers. So bevel, we'll do vertices, move them all the way in, 10, and add modifier, uh, solidify, and let's drag the thickness up, something like this. Actually, let's do it this way, something like this. Hey guys, uh, sorry to interrupt, but I just want to show uh, one thing that I recently added, and that is a Patreon page, and it's only a dollar a month. Basically, I put up a lot of the help animations, as well as some of the work that I've been doing lately. I'll throw some files up there, but also I've got some pretty cool K-Packs. I've got this one, which shows all of these different computer devices, and I've got uh, another one with all these uh, characters. Let me show you a little bit what I'm talking about. Let's, let's go to Blender here, KitOps, and let's just jump into ergo and this is a 97 percentile man let's add him and we can just move him up and set him right down so there we have him and then let's put him next to say a woman a 2.5 percentile woman actually we'll have her standing up and there she is we've got uh metal versions outline versions of everybody this is an outline and i'll choose a 50 percentile woman add her so these are great uh if you're designing an architecture and you want to compare you know this is a 50 percentile versus a 2.5 percentile uh, versus a 97.5 percentile man so you can compare different sizes and you can use these to help design around things you've got all these different materials that uh, they come with and that's all part of the patron so the other thing i'll show you real quick is the ortho k pack and let's talk about that let's again turn off auto scale and i can just add a keyboard insert come in here and we have a mouse add him in there very quickly we can build stuff up as you can see so here's a macbook pro and these are actually pretty good models, as you can see, as, as you look through them. They're very low poly. If I go into my wireframe and look at them, you see they're fairly low poly, but they're very carefully mapped in order to create the appearance of a great model. So uh, even when you zoom in, you'll see that there's highlights on the uh, key edges and everything. So anyway, 
Sorry to interrupt. Let's get back to our, our scheduled program. Just want to share that with you. Those Both those K-Packs are available, or, or actually a collection of K-Packs are available on my Patreon for only $1 a month. And if you subscribe now, your $1 a month will never go up. I will be uh, upping my pa the Patreon number to higher numbers, but those that get in early will only pay a dollar a month. Okay, back to our regular scheduled program. Okay, it doesn't really matter. But so now you can see these are all very coincident. So when we cut into this, we're going to have a real problem, or so one would think, right? So let's make sure that we've got also uh, segments 10. So we have the same segments. So if I make sure that we have bull tool turned on, or you can use hard ops or whatever. So shift, shift, control, minus, and bam. Look at that. Look how perfect that is. Let's take a look at that for a second. So that's exact. So before we had this called fast, and notice that fast would not have worked at all. Uh, but when we have exact, it nails it perfectly. Look how great that is. So we're excited. Now we want to bring up a core of this. If we look here, we see we're going to bring up this core right here. So that's simple enough. I'm going to hit Shift D, duplicate this. And then if I want to, I can go over here into my viewport display and I can set this to be wire if I want so, so I can see it a little better and all I'm going to do here is just say scale shift Z and move it in where I want it now I know I'm scaling here and I can do control a to ma match the scale but for right now I'm not going to worry about it uh, I'll just uh, leave it the way it is and so what I want to do is I want to subtract this from this so I'll take this and select this and say control minus and notice how nicely that works. And again, if we didn't have the regular bevels, that wouldn't have worked because there's coincident faces all over the place on this thing. So it works out great. Next, we want to actually cut out this little kind of a washer face that goes down in there. So that'll be somewhat easy. I'll grab this, shift D it, and I'm going to just move it up to where I think you know my depth is going to be. And then I'm going to scale it down a little bit, something like that. And I will select that. And now what I want to do is I want to subtract that from the original control minus and there it is and if I want to adjust that I just select this scale shift Z and I can adjust it however I want and notice it needs to be rather thin so we'll scale shift Z something like that and then of course I will shift D duplicate that and let's look at how wide that's going to be something like that so I'll say scale Shift D and move it in something around there. And now what I want to do is I am going to, let's go ahead and turn the visibility to wire on this. And I will also set the visibility of wire on that. So what I want to do is I want to take this one and subtract it from this one. So I do that and now I have my nice little area in there and you can see it's a little shallower so all I really need to do is take this one here and move it up and I'll make it a little shallower and that's easy enough and then finally I'm gonna take this uh, let's take any one of these but take this one right here and shift D and I am going to turn into wire so I can look at that let's go ahead and make the solidify here zero and then just extract all the way up scale it in and something like that and then shift and then delete that so now look how nice that worked out worked out great okay so let's talk about this piece over here so in this case I'm gonna actually uh, I could build up the cubes but I'm just gonna use a cube shift a mesh cube I'll scale it down let's drop it over here and let's build the first one something like this now we're going to want to shift D this so we have these two objects here that are going to represent a cutout now these two objects if we boolean these typically we're going to have a problem because they have all these coincident faces but we really don't have a problem right now and I'm going to show you why I'm going to shift select both of them control plus and now we've created one object how nice is that with that object created, I want to basically select this cube and this cube, or actually I want to take this cube 
and this cube and shift D and let's turn off that and I want to what I want to do is I want to take these last two cubes that I've just created let's go into local mode and this needs to be set to let's make this a solid also okay so let's do shift command plus and then let's make it intersect and that's what we want so now we're going to go back here and I'm going to take this intersect and just pull it out like so okay so next I'll just go take this and this command minus that's that gets that out of there and then we'll take this and this command minus and now we can see that we have our object created just as in the CAD drawing and it is perfect it's perfect due to Howard's work on these new exact modifiers now do know that exact modifiers will take longer to render than fast modifiers so the more you stack up the slower the process is going to be but as you can see it really wasn't too bad I looked pretty good I'm gonna take this and just say shade smooth it and then go into here and auto smooth the normals so I can come over here and just select the top one select the bottom one right click say shade smooth and now we are perfect that works great and that's really it that's going to show us uh, that's going to that's going to end it for us showing how to build that scad model directly in blender using the brand new booleans and how great are they huh thanks for watching see you around bye